Uh, we're going to use a bottle of Galfer's Super Dot Fluid. Um, you always want to make sure that you use a brand new bottle. If you've had the bottle open for more than a month, we'd say get a new one. Uh, brake fluid is very hydroscopic, meaning that it's going to absorb moisture out of the air, and moisture in your brake fluid is an enemy, so you don't want to do that. So always use a new bottle. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill the, the reservoir, which is currently empty, um, and we're going to start the bleeding process using a, a Mighty Vac, which uh, is probably the most common uh, tool used in bleeding uh, the brake system. Now you want to keep the reservoir full at all times so that you don't suck air back down into the brake lines. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's begin. Uh, Robert has the Mighty Vac, and so um, we're going to start off with the uh, right side caliper, left side caliper. First off, we're going to start off with the master cylinder. Since the master cylinder has a bleed, bleed nipple, so let's take out all the air that is trapped in at the master cylinder first so we can get the master cylinder working properly. So we start off by putting the wrench um, over the bleed nipple, and then you're going to want to put the Mighty Vac hose over top of that to create the suction and also um, suck out the fluid that we're going to be uh, pumping out of the master cylinder. And so you want to put some suction on the Mighty Vac so that when you open the bleed nipple, it will, it will drain fluid out. And so once the fluid starts coming through the hose, you've, you maintain suction on there, you can close the nipple. You always want to start with bleeding the master cylinder so that um, as you get further into the bleeding process, you can use the, the power that's used, uh, that's exerted by the master cylinder to actually bleed the system. So that's why we always start with the master cylinder. Um, and once that's bled, then you can move on to the calipers. Okay, and so what we've done is we've moved down to the right side caliper. Um, you're going to, again, use the, the wrench on the bleed nipple, attach your Mighty Vac onto that. You're going to build up pressure by pumping the lever, and then you're going to crack the bleeder. As you can see, the fluid is coming up through here, and uh, that's how we know that the fluid has traveled through the line. And then you're going to want to close the nipple back up once you've had fluid coming through. And then we're going to move to the left side. Same process on the left side that you had with the right side. Put the wrench on, build pressure in the Mighty Vac, and then crack the bleeder. You'll get fluid coming out. And after fluid's been coming out for a few moments, you can close the bleeder. So like when we first started, we had the reservoir full, so again, we're gonna put some more fluid in there just to make sure that as we continue the bleed process, we don't have to stop it at any certain point to, to make, uh, make sure that there's enough fluid in there. So we're gonna fill it up one more time to make sure we've got enough for the rest of the job. Like I said before, once now that we have fluid inside the system, we're gonna go back and actually pump with the master cylinder, not the Mighty Vac. The Mighty Vac is just here to catch all the brake fluid going into the reservoir. So we're gonna pump the lever a few times, build up some pressure, and then we're gonna hold the lever down. And then we're gonna crack the bleeder. You can see air bubbles coming out. And once you have uh, air bubbles coming out, you're going to want to close it back up. Should let me put the box in. And before you let go of the lever, you want to make sure that that is tight. Now it's tight, you let go of the lever, and we're going to pump it a couple more times. Usually about 10 or 12 times. And then we're going to hold the lever again, crack the bleeder again. And once again, you've got more air bubbles. And then once you've cracked it, you want to tighten it back up. Let go of the lever. We're going to pump it again. You should start feeling a little pressure building up in the master cylinder. That's it. And then once there, you use the Mighty Vac to keep the vacuum and suck the fluid out. And then you can break it off of the nipple. And then from that point, we can move on to the calipers again. So we're going to start again at the right side caliper. So now you're going to, once again, build up pressure with the master cylinder by pumping a few times. And then you're going to hold the pressure on the lever while cracking the bleeder. You can see fluid and bubbles coming out of the caliper. Tighten the bleed nipple one more time. And then you're going to let go of the lever, pump it again. And again, you should feel pressure building up through the master cylinder. So we pump. Then we hold pressure, crack again. Tighten the bleeder. And then let's do it one more time where you pump. 
building up pressure, building up pressure, and then we hold it, crack the bleeder, tighten the bleeder, and you're all good. Now use the Mighty Vac to suck the fluid out of the hose. And now we move over to the left side caliper. So now with the left side caliper, we're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna reach across the bike. Robert's gonna bleed while I pump the lever. So again, we pump 10 or 12 times, hold the lever. Robert's gonna crack it. We've got bubbles, tighten the bleeder. Once it's tight, go. you can pump again. You can already feel the lever getting really stiff. So hold the lever, crack the bleeder again, tighten the bleeder, and back to the lever, pumping it again. All right, last time. Okay. Now you should continue back and forth to the left and right calipers. Um, until you have no air bubbles coming out of the line. Um, and once that happens, you're good to go. You want to make sure that the fluid in the reservoir is still at, in between its minimum and maximum. Uh, we usually set it right in the middle of the two. Um, and then you can put the cap back on, make sure that you have your, your rubber seal over the top and screw it back on and that's bleeding your brakes. So we're putting back on the, uh, the reservoir cap. You've got your, your rubber cap and then you've got sealing cap and once that's on you usually have two screws now again the reason that we leave the fluid level halfway and you have some room for expansion is that so one as the system gets hot there's room for the brake fluid to move back up through into the reservoir um, and it, it creates uh, creates room so that your brakes don't drag it's something that we also recommend whenever you're changing your brake pads or if you've recently removed the wheel and are putting it back in you want to make sure that the brake fluid level isn't too high because what's going to happen is as you start riding and your brakes get, get hot, that fluid is gonna rise back into the reservoir. And if it doesn't have any room for it to expand, it's gonna keep the brake pads dragging on your rotors, which can cause problems either in brake fade, um, warped rotors. There's a number of things that can happen. So you wanna always check the brake fluid levels, no matter what you're doing. Anytime you're doing anything with the brakes, whether it's changing pads or you know, like we just did with bleeding the system, you wanna make sure that it's not too high. We recommend that you test the system overnight or at least for a few hours. So what we recommend by doing that, by putting pressure on the system, is you want to keep your master cylinder, uh, pressure on the master cylinder by holding the lever, and then you're going to want to zip tie it to your, uh, to your handlebar. And like I said, if you can do that for a few hours or even overnight, just leave it zip tied like that and that'll maintain pressure on the system. You can make sure that you don't have any leaks either from the, from the bolts or the, uh, the fittings on any of the, the fittings at the master cylinder or at the caliper. You just want to make sure that everything is tightened down to, to what we recommend and uh, that the system's ready to run.